Restevius is the host to five North American servers. Those who have the most hours on their servers win $10 weekly. They have extremely active staff and a rapidly growing Discord server with just under a thousand members in only two months. And they just dropped a new vanilla server, so make sure to go check them out in the description. Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at farming again and doing a completely updated guide. A couple of months ago, I released this video, but a lot has changed since then. If you've already seen the other video, these are the major changes that you need to be aware of. Cloth to scrap got nerfed. Previously, you could trade 50 cloth for 10 scrap, but now you need 80 cloth for 10 scrap, meaning that it got nerfed by 37.5%. Horses got nerfed, and they no longer drop anywhere near as much dung, hence, using fertilizer is almost never viable. My lighting designs got more efficient, which means you need less lights for your setup. The same goes for sprinklers, and also the water pump got a buff, which means you need less water pumps per floor. Because the scrap nerf was recent, a lot of people are still wondering whether or not the farm is viable. Because pumps got buffed to around 3 times as much water, you can save costs on pumps as well as electricity. Overall, I'd say that the farms got nerfed at around 30%, which is significant but not enough to make them not viable. With all that being said, hemp farms are still a great way of generating some passive income, so let's get into the video. The most efficient standard design is a 3x6 for a farm. So you need to have a 3x6 with planner boxes, and here's just an example design of how you can include your tool cupboard, boxes, electricity, and pumps. As you can see here, we have a 3x6, which is 18 planters. Then off to the right, we have our tool cupboard, we have our boxes, and there's a water pocket so that you can collect water without having to leave your base. Over to the other side, you can see there's just a standard airlock, and off into the corner, you can see this is where I put my pumps. It's important that the water is around knee deep and it's fresh water. You only need two pumps per floor, so you can wall off this area if you want. However, I know that I'll probably go more than two stories high, so I'll leave space for more pumps. Next to the front door, I keep my electrical stuff under a ladder hatch. This is safe. The reason the ladder hatch is there is so I can go up multiple floors. You don't need to use a ladder hatch, you can just use a half floor if you need to. The electricity for this design is extremely simple. All you need is all of your power going into root combiners, which then goes into a battery. Out of the battery, it goes into an e-branch, which then goes into the next e-branch, and then it goes into the lights. Each of the e-branches branches out five power into the pumps, and for every floor you need two pumps, which means you need two e-branches. As you go up in floors, you're going to need two more e-branches and two more pumps per floor. Keep the wiring the same, where the last e-branch power out goes into the lights, and they all branch out five power to each of the pumps. You'll also start to notice that you'll run out of power as you go up in floors, so you want to upgrade to a large battery as soon as possible. It's really easy to add more power into that large battery by simply adding more solar panels and more root combiners. Each large battery can output a maximum of 100 units of power, which is enough to power four floors. I also use glass windows, which are completely optional, but when I log off for the night, it lets raiders know that this is just a farm base and not to raid it. This design uses six sprinklers and six lights per floor. This is what the layout looks like. You need to copy mine exactly with the two middle sprinklers being dead on in the center and the outer two of each side being quite far out to the side. The lights need to be done in this exact configuration and each block of six planters needs to have a gap in it as you can see here. Connecting the water is very simple using a fluid combiner and if you're using salt water you're going to need double the pumps which means an extra fluid combiner and all the water has to go through a purifier. You need to have one of these set up for every single floor. It doesn't matter where you place your fluid combiner so long as it's as high as possible because water coming out of a fluid combiner can only travel horizontally or down, it cannot travel uphill. And keep in mind that you can only link six sprinklers together so you need a new fluid combiner per floor. These are the conditions of a plant. Light should always be at 100% if you've done the lighting correctly. Ideally, you want to keep your water between 4.5 litres and 6.5 litres. However, if you leave the sprinklers running 24-7, then they'll overwater and the water will go to 71%, which is fine. Ground will be at 67% and will only go to 100% when you add fertilizer. But because horse dung got nerfed, I don't recommend that anyone uses fertilizer, so you don't have to worry about that. Temperature should always be above 67% and that's determined by your location. Stay away from the snow and you should always be above 67%. 
your overall condition is whatever is weakest, and in most cases, it should always be ground at 67%. The only way to increase this really is to use fertilizer, but I don't recommend that any of you do. If they buff fertilizer or change anything, I will update everyone on my Discord and maybe make a new video. Also, heaters still don't heat plants yet, so stay away from the snow at all costs. Regardless of your location, you always want to have one of these three genes. The first two give you the most cloth output per hour, with triple G, triple Y being slightly better because it requires a little bit less maintenance. 2G4 wire requires a lot less maintenance, however the cloth per output is slightly lower. Here's a very useful chart which has heaps of information in case you need it. If you're not using fertilizer and you're using one of the genes that I suggested, it should take you roughly 10 minutes for that plant to reach sapping stage, at which stage you can clone it and then get 3 clones. Keep doing this until you have 162 clones, which is enough to fill up the entirety of one floor. Then plant 162 clones and clone them all. Now you'll have 3 sets of 162. With the first two sets you can plant them and then after an hour and 45 minutes harvest them and get your cloth and then on the third set you want to plant all of them and clone them after 10 minutes. Keep repeating this process and if you use 2G4Y you get four clones instead which means instead of every third cycle needing to clone it you only need to do it every four cycles which reduces the amount of time and effort you need to put into your farm which is beneficial to more players despite getting less cloth per hour. And if you're wondering how to choose your genes, you're going to have to learn how to crossbreed. I have a guide on how to do that in the description of this video. The reason I didn't add it is because it would make this video way too long. Also, when you first set this up, the planter boxes will be at 0 out of 9000 milliliters, and the sprinklers will take a couple of hours in order to fill them up. So for the very first time, you can use a water jug to kickstart this process and then never have to worry about it again. The best spot to build in my opinion is on a lake because it's flat and it has fresh water. Rivers are almost just as good and you can also even build it in swamps as part of the swamp is actually fresh water too. You can build on the coast and just use salt water however it's going to cost you double the pumps and you're going to need a purifier per floor. With that being said you always stay away from the snow as that's going to lower your cloth per hour significantly. Once you've found your location you want to place your foundation slightly above the water so that you can put your pumps down. The construction is pretty simple so I'll speed this part up. I usually upgrade my roofs to sheet metal as soon as possible because that way if I'm going up multiple floors raiders can't backwards pick upwards. Pumps can't go in water if it's too shallow so it's important to check to see that you can place them first. The size and shape of this base design is mostly optional except for the 3x6 part. Make sure that you place your planter boxes exactly as I do here. Place 6 in one end, then 6 in the other, and if you stack them up as close as possible to each other, when you place your middle 6 there should be a nice gap in between each group. It's important that you have this gap. Here's the setup for sprinklers and lights, it's important that you're as accurate as possible. You can manually water at the start if you don't have sprinklers set up yet, but light is essential, so set that up first. If your solar panel placement is correct and you're getting 20 units of power during the middle of the day, then two should be fine for the first floor, however it's very easy to add another one and just add another root combiner if you need more power. You need two e-branches per floor and don't forget to set them to five. You can connect all the lights in series and each floor uses 24 power. A medium battery can output a maximum of 50 so you're going to need multiple medium batteries if you go above two stories. However you can just use one large battery and go up to four stories if you want. If you copy my pump placement you can place four per square foundation. Make sure the branch out of each e-branch goes to one of the pumps.
That's the build complete. You can now go up as many floors as you'd like and increase your profit. Solar panel output power can vary based on location and placement. So if you find yourself running out of power, don't forget to just add another solar panel. You can create a chain of tool cupboards every 25 meters in order to take water from a faraway area and move it across the map. You can do this easily by placing a fluid combiner in each one of the tool cupboards. However, if you want to move water uphill, you're going to need a fluid switch which is powered, which means you're going to need a solar panel and a small battery in order to do this. It takes just under 6 hours for the perfect plant to die, so in order to grow plants overnight, you can set up a very simple circuit which cuts the growth speed in half. If you run the power into your lights through an AND switch, you can get another input coming from a solar panel. Now, this means that the only time that the lights will turn on is when the solar panel is getting light. Furthermore, if you use an e-branch, you can fine-tune this even further. Setting the e-branch to 10 roughly doubles the time it takes for your plants to grow. However, you can set this number to higher if you want to go AFK for even longer. This is something that's quite advanced and you need to play around with it to get comfortable with it because every solar panel is different and everyone's going to go AFK and go to bed for a different amount of time. Although if you don't understand this, don't worry, I don't recommend growing overnight because it just incentivizes offline raiding. This idea was first suggested to me by Mr. Wong where he suggested that you use an automatic timer system so you can fine tune it. I then came up with the idea to use the solar panel because it's a little bit easier, however it's not as accurate. Although if you're really interested in growing offline, these are some good ideas to help you get started. Another idea that he suggested is that if you buy the extra extra large picture frame, you can stack a lot of cloth by crafting these and flying over to bandit camp. This means that you can trade lots more cloth into scrap at one time. And on the rare chance that you are using fertilizer with my design, if you input a switch which cuts the water, you can turn it off whenever you're doing cloning cycles and the water level will always be perfect. That concludes the end of this hemp guide video. If you still have further questions, then I highly recommend you come join my discord because there's heaps of hemp farmers in there that will be able to answer your questions. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.